broadcast. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Can you hear us? <coughs> Hello friends, very good evening and welcome to the second webinar in Manufacturing Excellence Series. As Mr. Behra, he told the Kaizen is one of the Japanese management technique which made it as one of the best quality producer in the world and we have seen after the second world war how the Japan has become the benchmark for the quality now whole world is trying to learn from them. One of the most powerful and effective tool known as a Kaizen. This is a Japanese word which has contributed to tremendous development of Japan. Now whole world is trying to learn and <coughs> I'll try to share the essence of Kaizen with you which you can also practice in your companies. Hello. Yeah. <clears throat> so what is the purpose of any SME? Why you are doing a business? That is the main objective of every small, medium or large enterprise to make profitable growth. But we are unable to do in many situations so because of some problems which is not helping us to grow. So what prevents profitable growth? There are the three main regions, which is preventing any company to grow profitably. First is the poor quality or the low quality. Second is the high cost. And third problem is delayed delivery. The quality, cost and delivery are the three main concerns of the customer which is, if it is not met, it is a preventing a company for a profitable growth. So any company, whether large or small, they must focus on these three things, quality, cost and delivery. How to, <clears throat> so all the problems in quality, cost and delivery are retarding the business growth of a companies. So, all the entrepreneurs, they must focus on these three. How, what is solution to overcome the problems related to quality, cost and delivery is the Kaizen. The Kaizen is a tool, a problem solving tool to improve the growth of a company. Let's go back to the, our child days, children days story. I am sure that everybody must have read stories of Panchatan which was long back, about 40 years back, a series of Amar Chitra Katha was released in India. And all of us must have studied many stories. Like one of the story, the famous story is that a race between a turtle and the rabbit. Once upon a time in a jungle, the, all these animals, they decided let's have a race. And the turtle and rabbit came they told that, rabbit told that, I am the fastest runner. The turtle told, no, I don't accept it. After that, they decided, let's have a race. One day, they started the race. All of us know what happened ultimately. Finally, who won the race? The turtle. Which was ridiculed by the rabbit that he cannot win the race, but finally, he won the race. What made Turtle win the race is the continuous journey, continuous improvement in his efforts that made the race. That is the essence of Kaizen. In fact, Japanese, they take the Turtle as a, their guru to make the improvement. So that race is still continuing. That is not it over and it will never be over. The, for any product, 
any service, every kind of items, there is always race between a large companies, big companies, small companies, middle companies. It's not necessary that only the faster running and bigger companies will win the race. It is a who follows the principles of Kaizen, he is going to win the race. That is the essence of the Kaizen. So as you see in this picture, because of the continuous improvement, the turtle is climbing the hill. And these are the four phases of any activity, plan, do, check, act. This is called a PTCA tool, and the, the, which is used in the Kaizen that can make any company the world's best company. So the Kaizen in fact was taught to the world by one very famous Kaizen guru Masaki Imai. He was born in 1930. He is today 86 years old. He made Kaizen known to the world. He has taught Kaizen to whole world. The he has written two most famous books, Kaizen, which was written in 1964, and that book after 10 years came, Gemba Kaizen, so, which, is a, which are the best sellers in the world, and everybody is trying to learn. Unfortunately, I had opportunity to become his disciple. I undergone training in the Kaizen in Japan under his leadership, listed to Toyota and best companies of Japan. And while I was working in Fiki, Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce as a consultant, we collaborated with Kaizen Institute of Japan, which is a, being run globally under the leadership of Masaki Mai. So I had opportunity to learn from him and implement several Kaizen projects in very big companies in India. So based on that, I'm trying to share my experiences with you, how this can be applied in Indian companies to make the profitable growth of small, medium, and large, all kinds of industries. So Kaizen is a Japanese word. It is made of two words, Kai and Zen, as you are seeing on the display. Kai means change, and Zen means change for the better. So any change for the betterment, that is called Kaizen. So in nutshell, in English word, we can call it, it is a continuous improvement, which never stops, which has to be done by everyone, every day, everywhere. So this is applicable in small companies, big companies, private companies, government companies, anywhere, even in our house, in our personal life, at our workplace, we can continuously improve by learning the technique of Kaizen and we can progress forward. So, what is a Kaizen? It can be defined as a means for a continuous improvement without spending much money involving everyone from managers to operators. The Kaizen Guru Masaki Mai say, says, when there is no money, apply your brain and do Kaizen. So Kaizen is a creativity before capital. It doesn't require heavy capital investment, only creativity and applying your intelligence, learning the tools and make the improvement. There are two conditions essential for Kaizen. First, there must be a change for the betterment. From the current status to the new position, you have to bring a change, a positive change. And it must be continuous. As I told in the story of rabbit and turtle, why rabbit lost the race, though he was a very fast runner, because he was not continuous. After running a part of the journey, he just thought that I'll win the race and he slipped. So once the continuity is broken, you cannot make the Kaizen. So remember that there must be two things performed in the Kaizen. There must be a change and it must be continuous. It cannot be intermittent. So any small industry, it is a continuously growing, continuously working hard. It will definitely become one of the leading companies of the world. If you see the history of all big companies, they started as a small, small scale industry. Finally, they became the world class companies. Recent example, last time also I quoted Havels is one of the companies 
which hardly two decades back started as a small company. Now it is working in several countries. It has become a multinational company with a world-class quality products, mostly in the electrical appliances. So, the very first thing we must be clear for the purpose of any activity we do. The purpose, the same way we have to understand what is the purpose of Kaizen. Why an industry should go for the Kaizen. The purpose of Kaizen for your industry is twofold. You have to increase profitability of your company. How you can do it? By reducing the cost and maintaining the quality. So Kaizen activities focus on every process, every operation to create value for the customer, which is improving quality, cost and delivery and by reducing the waste. So the four keywords you must understand the process, operation, value and waste. So what is a process? Process is a sequence of operations needed to design, manufacture and deliver a product or service. It includes Four M's, as all of you know, that in any manufacturing industries, four M's are the critical things. Man, material, methods, and machines. When they interact, they create a product or service. So, from the Kaizen's perspective, every work is a process. Whatever we are doing, whether it is a writing a letter or producing a product or a driving a car, whatever activity we do, every work is a process. And the purpose of every process is to create value for the customer, ultimately, what is the purpose of whole process that must come out as a value. So the process must deliver value to the end user to meet the purpose. So the next keyword is the operation. Operation is an activity performed by a machine or a person on a material to deliver a valuable product or service. So when man, machine and material are interacting together, then some transformation taking place, which is a delivering value. So these operations value is added to transform raw materials into finished products to deliver value. Value, three most important components are quality, cost and delivery, which customer is looking for from the, your company. So as I explained, this is the model of a process like Let's take example of auto components. What you are doing, the four M's, the material you are taking a Tata Stelium products, seats, coils, and then using various kinds of machine for the blanking, deep drying, welding, finishing, and applying the technology or the methods of blanking, deep drying, finishing, and the, with the help of operators, ultimately the interaction of four M's coming out in the form of various products which is needed for the automobile industry in this typical example. But along with the good product, you are generating a lot of waste which we are not able to see other than some rejections. So there are various kinds of waste are generated. So what is a waste? Waste is not just only physical defective material but it is a waste of material, waste of time, waste of enough effort, waste of energy. There are so many wastes as per the lean manufacturing classification. Toyota, they identified eight kinds of waste. So waste is defined as any operation or activity that does not add value or which is not contributing towards quality, cost and delivery. That is a waste. So it is why waste is taking place because some unseen or hidden problems in the process. These problems may be related to three main areas. It may be quality related problems, it may be cost related problems, it may be delivery related problems. It appears as a defects, inventory, overproduction, transportation in a several forms. So as I mentioned earlier, these three things, quality, cost and delivery is the target of every industry they have to focus these three things how to improve. So the primary purpose of Kaizen is to solve the problems related to quality, related to cost and related to delivery so that waste is eliminated and your product becomes globally competitive and best as per the requirement of customer. 
So what are the benefits of collagen? First thing, the most important aspect of collagen is elimination of waste. Any activity which is not adding value thus must be minimized, reduced or eliminated. Then <coughs> the next purpose of collagen is improving quality, reducing cost, improve on time delivery, improving productivity, improve process capability, improve people competence and ultimately from the organization perspective it must improve the profitability. So by improving the quality, cost and delivery which is the main concern of your customer you are going to improve your productivity, you are going to reduce cost which is going to help you to increase your profitability. This is the main outcome of the Kaizen. Now let's come to how does Kaizen work? As I mentioned in the rabbit and turtle story, you just see here, the rabbit, he continuously step by step, uninterrupted effort he put and finally he won the race. But in case of the rabbit, the turtle continuously made his journey continuous improvement, but the rabbit, he thought that I am very fast, I can win very easily. He, though he started running fast, but because of interruption in his journey, finally he lost it, lost the race. The same thing to have a success in your business, you must have a continuous improvement, continuous uninterrupted effort for improving every process, every operation, every activity of your business. So this is the main mechanism behind the Kaizen is, as I mentioned, two things are important the continuity and change for the better. <clears throat> Friends, any question if you are having you can type, I'll in between, I'll try to answer your questions. So <clears throat> how Kaizen is implemented? It is implemented through unique three to five days workshop where the dedicated team works to make an improvement in your process to attain your target, which I will discuss in detail in the coming slides. So there are three types of Kaizen. In any company, there are problems you can classify at three levels. One problem is the bigger problems, which can be solved by your top management and the senior management, which is related to policy strategy. A Kaizen can be done at that level where the senior management and CEO has to be involved as a Kaizen team. The second problem is at the departmental level where the process owners, head of the department, he has to make some improvement in the process which needs change in the technology, major changes in the processing methods. And third type of Kaizen where a small Kaizen where individuals, each one of you, can make a small team at the soft load, all operators can be involved, every employee can do. So once they learn the technique, they can make small, small changes in their day-to-day -day operations. So Kaizen is not just only small improvement, Kaizen means improvement in every type of activity, whether it is small or the big or the medium. So the type of team has to be changed. One is a strategic level, another is operational level, another is tactical level, this way. Kaizen is possible at every level and it should be done to make continuous improvement for the profitable growth of the company. So here you can see three types of Kaizen. One is the management oriented Kaizen which involves managers and heads of the departments. Objective is to improve the system at the highest level and various tools are PDCA project management. Second is group oriented Kaizen where the supervisors and operators are involved, what they do improve the process of every company, every process and the Kaizen events and PDCA tools are used. Another is an individual oriented Kaizen which every employee can do where he is working, he or she is working, they can improve their machine, they can method, they have technique and here the work items can be improved and it is popular as a quality circle for the all operating people, they form a group and try to do it. So in every company at all these three levels, Kaizen should be done. 
So senior level to make this system improvement at the process level where the middle managers are involved, HODs are involved at the bottom level at the soft load level where the quality circles are there, every employee is involved for making the improvement. So <clears throat> Kaizen is nothing but a problem solver. As I told, why the waste are generated? Because of some hidden problems in your process which you are not able to see. So the Kaizen is a technique, methodology. It follows the four steps, plan, do, check, and act. In the during pl planning stage, we are trying to find what is the problem which is holding my quality cost and delivery to lower level? See, the three most important thing is, is a concern is quality, cost and delivery. So if anything adverse is taking place in the quality front, defect is generated, cost is going up or the delivery is not on time. So there must be some problem. So by asking what we are trying to identify the problem. Then second, stage what we do we collect the data and analyze to find out the what is the root cause of the problem so why is the identification of the root cause unless we reach to the root cause and develop countermeasure we cannot solve the problem so the planning stage is identifying the problem analyzing the root cause and developing a countermeasure to overcome that problem then once plan is made solution is known just like a doctor writes a prescription for the treatment, then we start the treatment do phase. Once we have got the right prescription for the solving the problem, then we have to put in practice. We have to deploy the solution on the soft floor in our process. Then after that, we have to continuously monitor whether we are getting the desired solution or not, whether the process is improving or not. If it is improving, then it means that we have followed the right solution we are following the right path. If it is not, it means it needs correction in our solution. So once we become sure that our process is improved, quality, cost and delivery are coming as per the target, then we standardize the process. We make the standard procedure for operating our process that is documented and every employee is trained on the standard procedure so that the working becomes stable and the similar and process goes on continuously giving the quality cost and delivery targets required by the customer. So these are the 10 rules you must understand about the Kaizen. First, improve everything continuously. There must be just like a turtle. There must be continuous effort for making improvement. Second, abolish old traditional concepts. Miss we have to change our mindset. We have to come out from the, our old tradition. This was being done for the last 30, 40 years. That should continue. We have to abolish that concept. We have to adopt a new method. We have to forget the way we are doing. So the better method has to come over the old traditional methods. Third is the accept no excuses and make things happen. There should not be any excuse of the not doing not implementing the plan in the Kaizen. Say no to the status quo of implement new method with confidence. If you want to improve, you have to forget, you have to say goodbye to your status quo. You have to change from, you have to come out from your comfort zone to new way of working for improvement. If during the journey of employment, uh, deployment of Kaizen, if something goes wrong, don't wait for the time. Immediately stop the process and rectify immediately. Six, empower everyone to take part in the problem solving. Give authority, responsibility to your supervisors and employees, operators. If any problem comes, they should themselves take a decision and immediately take corrective action. Get information and opinions from multiple people. Don't depend on your own thoughts or only one person's views. Take the help of all the people, irrespective of their the designation, their working, everybody has got a creative idea. Take everybody's opinion for the improvement or solving any problem. Before making any decision, ask why five times a powerful tool of why why. Unless you get to the root cause of the problem, go and asking why and take solution. Save money through small improvements and spend the same money on further improvements. This is the unique approach of Japanese. 
First, they earned money by making a small improvement. But it was a capital accumulated from the same money. They made the major improvement which brought the breakthrough. And remember that improvement has no limits. Never stop trying to improve. So, the, in fact, the, it is told by the gurus who wrote the book on search of excellence. Tom Peter, he, saw, he told that there is no excellence. There is no excellence. It is a dynamic target. So there is no improvement on the limits of a Kaiser. There is always something better hidden in, in the future. So we, we can achieve only by the Kaizen and these 10 rules are the most practical aspect of the Kaizen which must be followed by every one of us. So how the Kaizen is implemented? It is one of the unique method of Kaizen. It is called as a Kaizen event. In the Japanese they call it Kaikaku also or the rapid improvement event. So it is a rapid and focused approach to make improvement in specific areas of soft load or office. It is a three to five days dedicated event where a team of concerned people, cross-functional team, only spends total time of three to five days to make the improvement with a clear objective and a well-defined scope. So changes implemented rapidly by the team during this period and it is a total team activity and everyone gets involved. So this way, in the five days, you can bring a phenomenal change in your process, which is impossible even the five days. Even during my consulting intervention in one of the company in the Balasur Alliance, they make ferrochrome. They made record production during the Kaizen event, which was during since inception, they could never do it. They, I was involved in that project and I witnessed it with young engineers team. They did record which was never done by the company during since inception. So it has got a tremendous energy which can make something great happen in three to five days. So I'll explain how the Kaizen event takes place. So Kaizen event is a team activity performed at work base to make changes in the process for improving quality, reducing cost, improving on-time delivery, improving productivity and other performance of the process. So who are the people involved in the Kaizen event? First, you must be having a Kaizen consultant. In Japanese, they call it sensei. A consultant is in fact not the correct word. It is a coach. You need a Kaizen coach who has got a conceptual understanding as well as the practical wisdom to guide the team. Then in every company, there must be one and only one coordinator who coordinates between the consultant and the, all the teaming. Then the role of chief executive is very important. He is the sponsor. He has to give the complete support and fully involved in the Kaizen event without the support of chief executive or the top man it is not possible to make a successful Kaizen. Then the next comes a plant manager who is running all the operations. Then the process in chart, in which process the Kaizen is going to take place. The HR manager, because it is a team working, so the HR role is very critical here. They have to bring the team, they have to motivate them, they have to provide all the support. And finally, every team member is equally important because they are going to do the Kaizen. So you have seen in the, this Kaizen is not one man's job, right from the topmost person to the bottom most at the soft load level, everybody has to be involved. Then only permanent profitable growth change can take place. So <clears throat> to, before doing a Kaizen, one has to do the preparation. Preparation first, the Kaizen cannot be done in whole company in one go. If you are having any question on this, you can please type on your computer. I'll try to respond to that question. So what is the preparation needed? If you want to improve your process, select one area for the improvement, which can be having a lot of problems or which is the most important from your business end. Either it is the worst area you can select or it is the best area which is giving you the maximum business that must be improved. 
then out of that area you select one problem just like in our body doctors treat every disease one by one there is no one single medicine which can treat all the problems so the same way you cannot have a one kaizen for solving all the problems select problem project by project first select area then select a problem then form a kaizen team here the structure of team should be very carefully made the cross functional team and the person who are involved in that process they should be involved for the kaizen after the team is formed you set a goal what is the current state and i want to improve my process from x to x plus 10 so once you have established your team set the goals then all logistics and other support required that should be organized in the company this way the first before launching your kaizen event all this preparation must be done well in advance so how to select an area as i told select an area of your plant which have an impact on your business which can improve your profitability which can improve your turnover which is having a lot of problems or giving scope for growing your business but not pose difficulty in the beginning but don't take the very difficult area so that it becomes difficult to improve so you have to create first a kaizen success story in your company so that your people start believing in the kaizen and develop the confidence of doing it then develop a criteria for selection of areas of your future kaizen projects as i told kaizen is never ending as long as your company exists there has to be kaizen so you have to develop a criteria how to select the kaizen projects your consultant kaizen consultant can guide you to selection on kaizen project so you can make a short term as well as long term plan for improvement through the kaizen so this will help you learn the kaizen process then select a problem for improvement in fact any company whether it is a big or small it is a gold mine for the problems we are not able to see the problems no okay you can ask any questions yeah i i got it so there are, every company is full of problems only we have to develop our third eye to see the problem we are not able to see the problem or overlooking the problems so the the most important problem is that any quality defect because of some problem type the questions no they have type no after that means last time in the game i told them yeah please type your questions if it comes so i i'll answer so what are the problem areas first see any defect any reject any quality complaint means there is some problem so poor quality is one of the biggest area for the problem late deliveries especially in our indian industry we are having a biggest problem of no on time delivery In, in spite of having a lot of raw materials plenty of inventory deliveries are there that is a problem area high waste generation poor yield lot of rejections that is another area for the problem frequent breakdowns of your machines machines are frequently coming down and you are not able to meet your productivity targets so the material shortage it means some problem in your procurement process or the heavy inventory is another problem so you have to select one problem which need to be addressed by the kaizen once you have selected the area for the kaizen then you have selected the problem now you have to form a kaizen team which is going to learn and implement the solutions to make the improvement first you have to define you have to identify a team leader who is a really positive who has got a knowledge of the process who has got a attitude to make the people work in a team so one team leader should be nominated then select five to seven team members who are touching the process are impacted by the process who are continuously involved in the production activities value creation activities they should be involved 
then it should be cross functional team which is not just only the production operator there should be maintenance person quality person even the marketing person even somewhere if more problem is there with the customer the customer can be also invited to become one of the member because he is facing the problem so enthusiastic members members must be positive and they want to contribute they take it as a challenge to make improvement for the betterment you can include experts technology experts you can include them hire them from the outside because they can give lot of valuable suggestions and solutions include persons with kaizen experience in your company if somebody has done earlier kaizen he should be also make a member because he can help to share his experiences his or her experiences with the team of course all has to be done by a kaizen sensei who has got a formal qualification and experience to implement the kaizen now you have selected area you have selected the problem form the team now set the improvement goals it should be smart goals i am sure you must be aware about the smart world any goal setting the five things are important goal must be specific it must be measurable it must be achievable which can be really achieved and challenging it must be realistic and it must be time bound so goal setting itself is a very tricky and specialized subject i can take sometimes whole one day webinar on the goal setting only in the future so goal should be challenging it must give a challenge to the people to apply their knowledge skill attitude to make something unique in the company team should be involved in goal setting that goal should not be set by the boss or some outsider that everybody should be involved in the goal setting and team members must have a say what is the current state and how much they want to achieve to set the goal it may be possible goals cannot be achieved 100% doesn't matter even 20% 30% improvement is a positive one should not think of that 100% one should not be depressed in the beginning there may be lesser achievement but with consistency even many times you can exceed the 100% mark this happens in the kaizen nimats so make preparation for the event now event should be well organized well planned just like we celebrate any festival or the marriage everything is marriage is a great event everything is planned months before same way kaizen event should be planned well in advance in detail for that what you have to do collect all relevant available information before starting the kaizen all information should be collected about the quality cost delivery customer complaints whatever the problems are there all the basic information should be collected from the floor organize logistics all arrangements for having a training for working of the teams to implement the kaizen solutions on the south floor all logistics all the arrangements should be organized there must be a training room where the people should be trained by the experts and have got a space and time for working on the problems then all the related stationary training material other essential items required for the event like logistics like there the tea coffee food lunch all this arrangement should be made by the kaizen uh, event organizer and it should be communicated to all the concerned people who are going to participate in the kaizen much in advance maybe a week advance ke on this date these are the people they have to do these activities complete schedule has to be circulated so everybody is prepared and time is not wasted so as here it is so this is a unique five days event that is popular throughout the world the monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday all five days a set agenda is made what activity has to be done based on the experiences of thousands of kaizens across the world a, a schedule is made so this kaizen event involves five phases first is the orientation whole team must get oriented what is a kaizen how to do it what are the tools techniques they must come to common understanding of, about the methodology this is the first day only orientation and the skill is different the second day the whole team goes on the problem area understand the current situation of the process they observe it every process 
collect relevant data from the process and interact with the people, discuss with the people, take out from the records all the data collection facts based information is collected. Then <coughs> all data is third day analyzed and the third day all data are analyzed and a solution is evolved and the targets are set. The complete plan is made what changes need to be done in the process to improve the performance. Once plan is ready, fourth day, whole team just goes on the soft floor, works on the process and make changes necessary to improve the performance. And once that is achieved, the process is standardized and the fifth day, all the outcome data collected, a report is present, prepared in a structured way and whole presentation is made to the complete organization what we have achieved how we have achieved so the all five days working is very clear yeah okay so so all this is the five days activity is well structured now some question has come how does one identify I'm just answering some questions have come. I'll clarify. If you are where is it? Well, first one. There is a question if we are doing improvement for a process regarding safety then it comes under Kaizen or not. It is very much Kaizen. In fact, the safety is the number one area for the Kaizen because everything we are doing only for the human being. Safety is the most important. I am happy that you have asked the question. The safety is the number one concern. There must be top priority Kaizen for the safety. It is a very much essential and the most important Kaizen you must do. Thank you for such nice question. How does one identify small, large and medium problem accurately? See, <clears throat> the large problems where the policy matters, where the CEO and top management is involved, where some change in the policy is required, that is a top level Kaizen. Like a parliament, for example, that is doing the topmost Kaizen, bringing a change. In fact, parliament is made only for the Kaizen. They are making policy changes changes in the rules and regulations of the country. So the, where the top management is involved, there the major decisions, that is a top level Kaizen. Where the at HOD is involved, who, who can decide solutions at his level in a particular process, that is a middle level. And here the bottom level is where the every operator is involved, that is a third level small Kaizen medium kaizen and large kaizen now next question is some audio connection last i am getting i think this one is, yeah can you please repeat the role of chief executive in kaizen team the role of chief executive he is the sponsor of the kaizen and so any changes without the consent of chief executive cannot come so he must be fully involved in the kaizen process then only a permanent change can take place. So he is going to take a final decision. He is going to provide the resources required for the Kaizen because without his approval, if any resources you get financial or the technology upgradation, it is not possible. Therefore, the most important role of chief executive is there for making a sustainable Kaizen. The next is most of the processes are defined by the OEM customers. In such cases, normally customers do not allow to change the process. How can one address such problems? So here, it is not a question of changing the process. It is changing the, I, I, in the beginning, I told process and operations. 
problem comes because of the wrong operations. The, and the OEM should be also involved in the collision activity. Here in every process, you are going to improve your operations. You are going to identify which are the wrong operations done. That is causing a problem. And the, in such situation where you are having some problem in the process, then you can involve OEM also as a member of your team because ultimately OEM is going to benefit maximum by this Kaizen. He is going to get the better quality at competitive cost and the on-time delivery. What is the difference between continuous and continual improvement? Yeah, very nice question. Continuous, those who have undergone ISO 9000, they must have understand, understood. Continuous improvement, I'll give the example. Continuous improvement like a slope. It is a straight slope is there. That is a continuous improvement, a ramp. But continual improvement is just like steps, step by step. You make, improve, stabilize, then again go, bring a change, then again stabilize, then go. So the continual improvement is the step by step improvement. That is a Kaizen. And continuous improvement is like a slope. So the, in, in fact, we need a continual improvement. First, a team which is a developing solution and once it is implemented, it is standardized. It is called a PDSA, Plan, Do, Standardize and Act. So where the continuous improvement is PDCA. <coughs> so this has to be understood very clearly, but let's not confuse at this stage. We have to go step by step approach that is a Kaizen. Definition how to train person at soft floor level or who are literally illiterate. Any specific step. It's not question of literacy or illiteracy. Here everybody has got a common sense what Masaki Mai, the Kaizen Guru says, it is a common sense approach. But unfortunately, common sense is the most uncommon thing. It doesn't have common sense, doesn't have any link with the so-called literacy. Educated means doesn't mean that he is, has got very high common sense. So here the step has to be taught in a practical terms on the soft floor. I am doing it. It has to be taught in their language in the during consulting. We are trying to make us the people, even the operators, how to make the improvement and they understand it. We need not create a technical jargon. It is a by project by project, <coughs> people are trained and it is a very much possible once they learn the PDCA approach and then it becomes very easy for them. So, it's a, so this is the five step during the five days Kaizen event, these five things are being done. Here the detailed agenda for the the day one orientation, day two understand current situation, day three is develop future state design, <coughs> and day four make the improvements, and day five report and celebrate. This is based on the experiences of millions of Kaizen, agenda is made, which is more the element once you are implementing in your company, then the complete structure can be implemented in a process. And now let's come to each day what need to be done. Let's. The Kaizen event, the very first day, orientation. What the orientation against? Once the event date is decided on the day one, welcome to Kaizen team. A Kaizen expert or Kaizen coach, he comes to the event and welcomes all the Kaizen team. As for the nominated team comes as per the agenda, then their expectations are set. Every team member expects his his or her expectations, what the improvement he or she is going to do, their expectations. Introduction of Kaizen objectives and concepts. The purpose of Kaizen must be made clear to every member, those who are going to be involved in the Kaizen event. So the orientation is done. They must have a clear understanding what is the objective and how it is going to be achieved. Then provide training on Kaizen methodology. A Kaizen expert, he provides training to the all team members how they are going to do the PDC step by step and then assign roles and responsibilities of 
to each team member because it is a team work and lot of activity has to be done so finally finally it is done so every person is assigned responsibility with a clear roles and responsibility during first day everybody is trained and knows what is the basic approach there are some questions uh, i just answer then move. how how to train persons soft floor i have answered this can be trained by a kaizen coach in their own language how can you make a orientation as i told orientation is basically telling why it is important how it is being done so this is the these are the steps of orientation as i explained the very first day everybody is made clear about the methodology the purpose and their roles and responsibility the next day one identify customers see ultimately the purpose of any kaizen or organization is meeting the requirements of customer and the three most important requirements are quality cost and delivery so we have to understand what what is the quality specification of customer what is the cost as expectations of customer and what is the delivery schedule so how it is done map the process one of the tools quality management tool you have to process you have to conduct a process mapping of the entire event right from day 1 to day 5 so beginning to end right from the incoming material to dispatch or till the material product reaches in hands of customer every activity has to be mapped every process has a customer it may be internal customer or external customer review the process once the map is made then review the process where is the problem coming why why it is not able to meet the requirement of customer then identify the customer who is the exact customer customer doesn't mean that who is buying your product they may be internal customer so the from the quality angle customer is defined as the next process in your customer because the whole organizational process is a sequence of processes so one process produces a product gives to the next process so the next process becomes customer their requirements must be known by the preceding process and they have to meet it then specify customer requirements so once you have understood the requirement of customer it should be clearly specified in terms of terms of quality what are the specification how much quantity is required when it is required what is the cost impact to involved how it is to be delivered so all these aspects must be specified that is the starting point for the <coughs> customer so the day one you have to collect all process data this is called baseline data what is the current operations performance that must be collected so pre event baseline like lead time touch time cycle time percentages all the data are collected product service demanded by type by shift customer all production and demand rate must be identified data must be there quality defect percentage rework how much rework is being done what are the inspection points all the realities must be observed cycle time by product or service But what is the cycle time for each operation that must be collected space requirement distance travel pictures before improvement and after improvement must be taken safety issues one of gentlemen asked about the safety issue is the most important thing what are the safety aspects of your process how safe it is If the process is unsafe what are the future plans what are the past history of the accidents so all these aspects must be taken into consideration and that becomes a concern for the kaizen then the second day i think how to make orientation this is i clarified during the first day then they using technology is a kaizen see buying a new technology is not a kaizen that anybody can do you can just throw away the existing process and you can bring a new one but making improvement by applying your knowledge skill and attitude using the various tools that is a kaizen 
otherwise old technology you are just making obsolete buying kaizen that is a breath that is not kaizen that anybody can do it that by investing capital but applying your brain here basically your wisdom your knowledge of the kaizen your knowledge of your process where it is used for the betterment that is a kaizen so <clears throat> the second day as i told understand the current state what is my current level of operations that becomes baseline because we have to make improvement about the current level so the clear understanding of the baseline deep understanding of the existing process and dependencies how my process is operating that is important then identify all the activities currently involved in developing a new product the another very important aspect of any business is that you must go on continuously developing new product growth of a company takes place more than more from the new product development like <coughs> apple they see that their 70% revenue must come by new product so every company whether it is small or big they must focus on the product development because that is going to give them the competitive edge and the for the product development kaizen is the most powerful tool then observe the process first hand don't depend on somebody's information if you are going to make improvement you know, implement kaizen go and observe the process yourself spend time on the soft floor and critically examine how the people are working flow chart the process <coughs> or define the value stream here the flow chart is one of the very powerful tool by which one can understand the current state of the process so <clears throat> after the second day what are the various tools as i mentioned the flow chart as you are seeing step by step how the process is operating each step by making the people involved all the process owner they should be involved use uh, your wall and you you can use the post it on for making the flow chart this flow chart gives a deeper understanding of every step and it helps to investigate where is the problem then once you have flow chart collected all basic information the most important thing is that finding out the root cause of the problem as i told kaizen is a, a problem solving technique problem is causing all defects the reason for defects reason for the delay reason for high cost so what is the root cause that need to be addressed here just as you are seeing in this diagram we are trying mostly we are trying to solve the problem from the physically what we see but the problem is in fact invisible under the root under the which is not seen so the purpose of kaizen is to go collect data analyze the various statistical and kaizen tools to reach to the root cause because unless the root cause is improved you cannot get the solution so mostly we do temporary solutions just on symptomatic on the seeing the weed but here one has to go on the root and for that one has to learn the tools one of the most famous tool is called as cause and effect diagram here if any problem is coming in your quality cost delivery safety productivity morale or the environmental problems it is because of these six factors what you have seen here either the manpower or the operations are being wrong or your methods means your technology or working the way of working is wrong either your machines are not capable or not working properly or your material is not of good quality or your measurement even many situations you are good in making a very good quality product but the wrong method of measurement or wrong the tool giving a wrong reading you are just rejecting the material so the measurement accuracy is very important your tools must be very correct calibrated and the per per person who is measuring testing he must be well qualified he should not make it, any mistake and many situations mother nature environmental factors humidity pressure temperature 
of the ambient temperature, they may cause a problem in that. So the causes are hidden in the six main area, you can expand it. So here the problem is, effect is a problem, it is because of the six areas of the hidden causes. The purpose of cause and effect diagram, we have to exactly reach where is the, which is the real root cause, because we need to find a solution for the root cause, then only we can solve the problem. So <clears throat> cause and effect analysis is one of the very powerful tool used throughout the world. Then another tool is why why analysis. Go on asking why why at least five times. Just like this is a very nice example. A compressor say for example, which is running in your company, suddenly it stops working. Why did the machine stop? First you ask. Because the fuse blew due to an overload. There was some problem in the compressor, overload was coming and the fuse blown. First time electrician changed the fuse, but again it is blowing. Why was there an overload? Then you have to ask. Because the bearing lubrication was inadequate. The shaft was getting more hot and lubrication was not there. So that was causing load and that was the fuse was blowing. Then why it was lubrication was in it? Third question. Because the lubrication pump was not pumping sufficient. Because your pump was not working properly. That was, that's why there was no enough lubricant was going. Why was not the lubricating pump working right? Because the pump shaft was worn and red. Why it was going? Because the shaft was worn and rattling. Why it was run? Because there was no strainer and metal scrap cut. Because in the oil pumps supply line, a strainer is required and there is no strainer and because of some iron chips went and that worn out the shaft and the whole thing was. So the fuse was blowing but the reason was that because of absence of strainer, some chips were, iron chips were going and they were damaging the shaft. So unless we go on asking why, why at least minimum five level we cannot reach to the root cause. So these are the two most powerful root cause analysis tool, cause and effect diagram. This is known as the Ishikawa diagram also. Ishikawa was the person in Japan who contributed maximum development in quality. So it, he, he made, it is called like a fish bone diagram. So it is known as a Ishikawa diagram or the fish bone diagram also. So these are the two tools every employee must be trained on it. And here somebody asks if they are not literate. It's not necessary. Literacy, formal education is not necessary. They can be taught that questioning and they can really <clears throat> learn it and do much better than many situations than the literate persons. <coughs> Sorry. So these are the two tools which help you to identify the root cause. Second day, you are collecting data <coughs> and trying to find out the, what is the true root cause of problems. Now third day, now you have got the data, you got the, uh, the problem, main problem, you have to develop a solution for the future state, how you are going to do. How to develop solution? One of the very, far, very powerful tool is brainstorm where the every people, every person come together, a team works and they go on trying to develop various alternative ideas. Brainstorming, one very important rule that no idea is stupid. Thinking any idea as stupid is stupidity. So all inventions has happened by non-professional, non-technical team. Even I read in the literature when Wright brothers were developing the aeroplane, one of the Nobel laureate in the physics, it is on the record, he says, he said that anything heavier than the air cannot fly in the air. But that became false. All your aeroplane, all the material, whether it is aluminium or the steel made of so many metals, everything is heavier than the air. That is a flying. So the brainstorming is a very powerful tool. There are some rules of brainstorming. You invite everybody, forget about it, their designation, their literacy, education. 
because all the great inventions done by not non engineers so people will come together all the operators irrespective of their designation they should brainstorm and come out with it, various ideas to develop solutions then <clears throat> for each problem there should be number of solutions there should be not be only one solutions one has to go on developing various solutions by brainstorming with open mind so once many solutions are developed then one has to select one most appropriate solution which is feasible which is suitable and which is flexible so there should not be restriction in developing a solution after solutions select the which is the most appropriate and implement that particular solution so once solution is selected developed and selected then develop implementation for developing any new solutions you need some new skill sets new knowledge sets that's why before implementing that solution people must be trained how the new change has to be made then let me see some questions have come what is the definition of measurable i couldn't get this question question measurable means which you can measure it like in the quantity terms 1 2 3 4 4.6 4. like temperature is measurable if somebody says i got a fever so just fever is not giving anything or very high fever it has to be measured in terms of okay 102 degree fahrenheit or that so it must be measured by some tool it can be like weight like a dimension so that is the meaning of measurable how to train the person soft load level who are literate by examples they can be trained and there is no problem i am already doing is there is no problem once you start implementing kaizen how can we make orientation already i have covered how to make orientation by through training using technology is a kaizen no improving the technology is kaizen is there any limit for improvement of for doing kaizen no limit the sky is the limit there is no limit one can go on making better and better and we don't know how much we can make a better only future can tell how many how many how many kaizen team form in a small scale industries so it depends on how much time your people can devote in fact the quality circle forum of india that is helping many industries you can create throughout the culture of company in every department there may be several kaizen teams can be working it depends on the organizational level if you create a proper structure for many making kaizen teams you can have many teams in your company it depends on the how much time and effort you can dedicate for that how to create how to create environment to make everyone follow which is a bench mark daily because people get enthusiastic whenever training session conduct but enthusiasm gradually reduces with time and productivity i i'll cover this one how to sustain this is not only in india throughout the world this is problem any new things in our life we take with a lot of enthusiasm but after that that is not sustained there is some other forum i I'll, i'll talk because that is a different topic and that is one of the very important in the define measure analyze improve and control finally the control phase which brings permanent transformation in the uh, culture of the organization and mindset of people that makes it sustainable but that comes at the end of it i'll come later on because this is a very exhaustive topic definitely i'll cover in one of the web webinars now let's develop about the implementation plan was now you have selected the right solution then that before making implementation plan you have to train the people because any change requires some new skills some new knowledge so is the current organizational structure sufficient sometimes you have to refine 
restructure your organization. Somebody has to make responsible for implementation. Or their cultural issue, as you ask, if sustenance is the cultural issue, that is a long-term strategy is required. Is there potential for pushback? It happens. There is always, if there is not a proper control, there is not proper monitoring, again, it comes back to that. There is a maximum chances is there, back to square happens. An implication for the suppliers, implication for the customer. Any change may impact the customer, may impact the supplier. So they should be part of your Kaizen team. They must be informed these changes we are going to do. And they have to also make accordingly an adjustment in their processes. So implementation, implications for team members, this must be known to the people so that they are ready for an easy transformation. Some new questions have come. How be how be quality circle in individual Kaizen? Quality circle is a team Kaizen. It is not an individual Kaizen, but if you are doing something improvement like whatever operation you are doing, you can do yourself also without making any, you can take input, but you can do all changes yourself. That becomes individual Kaizen. Like changing my habits, that is individual Kaizen. But changing the style of working of my family members or team, that becomes a quality circle. So individually also I can improve. You can improve as a small team, you can improve in a large team. So the Kaizen can be at every level, single person can do, two person can do, three person can do, large team can do. So this is a possible everywhere. They must know the Kaizen process. Somebody asked, what is the touch time? Touch time <clears throat> when a man machine actually operations take place with a man machine and material. If all three are together. So touch time in every machine operator is not touching all 24 hours if you see hardly his job is to set the machines his touch time may be only 10 percent or 20 percent of the total operation 90 by means more other time he is just observing not creating any value adding he is just observing or the waiting so the touch time when actually practically operator is touch in touch with the touching the material and machine for adding the value. That is a touch time. How to practical on improving manufacturing productivity? How to practical tips on improving manufacturing? So <coughs> productivity improvement can be done. This is a practical tip. Whole thing Kaizen is the most practical way to improve the productivity. Productivity means your output divide by the input if it is a low what is a holding you why what if why your input is coming getting wasted why it is coming low to try to identify that problem and improve by the kaizen try to find out does kaizen have to be done only by the person who works performs the task in the chosen area or anyone else in the organization. So actually very nice question you have asked. The most important, the person who is performing the work, he is the key to the Kaiser. Others can contribute, others can guide, give the inputs. The person who is really doing the task, he is the main driver of Kaiser. He must be involved, the operator, he must be involved in the Others, they can give the inputs. They can help them to find out the solution as a team. But the actual task, actual change is made by the operator of the machine where the Kaizen is being done. Very nice questions are coming. I hope these are, I am able to clarify the doubts. Can quality be achieved without cost? Can quality be achieved without cost? See, 
one of the very famous quality guru, Crosby. He is no more. About 30 years back, he wrote a book, Quality is Free. Again, after publication of that book, after 20 years, he wrote another book, Quality is Still Free. In fact, quality, quality reduces cost. Quality gives benefit. It is a free. As for the Crosby, it is a free. Because of once you improve the quality, your rejection rate comes down, your productivity improves, your on-time delivery improves. So quality may require cost in the initially. It is not cost, it is investment of learning, investment of improvement, investment of Kaizen. Kaizen is not cost. Kaizen is investment. You are investing time to learn. So, so I can say quality doesn't require cost. It may require investment in the beginning to learn it, to make it improvement, but it is going to be free. Is to correct any mistake is considered to be Kaizen? No. Correcting a mistake is not Kaizen. Improving the process to prevent the mistake is Kaizen. Because once you are correcting the mistake, only you have taken symptomatic treatment. You have not gotten the root cause. If mistake is happening, so by Kaizen you can improve the process so that that mistake is not happening. That is a Kaizen. Correction is not Kaizen. Implementation of 5S is Kaizen or not? <clears throat> Implementation of 5S is a workplace improvement. Through workplace, 5S is one of the tools for the Kaizen. It is a 5S implementation is not Kaizen, but 5S is one of the tools for the Kaizen for making an improvement. Sir, will this presentation be all over? Yes, it will be very much all over. Whole presentation will be on the YouTube after this is over. You can always refer the complete whatever we are discussing. It will be all over on the YouTube. It is a basically, we want that you must learn implement so you can go several times to this presentation after a couple of days, it will put on the YouTube. You can contact Tata Steel, they'll inform. Okay friends, let's move forward. <coughs> so, third day, develop various solutions. The brain brainstorming is the Develop implementation plan. Once you have selected the plan, now how it is going to be implemented, then communicate the plan. So every plan, what is specific changes needed to occur? In what sequence it has to be done? What are the resources needed? The get commitment of the people, impact on existing activities and functions, responsibilities. So all these aspects of changes which need to be put in practice to make Kaizen must be communicated to the, all the concerned people. Before execution, they must know it. So the communication third day, you are communicating to the people. And now fourth day, that is a, making a change for the better. Kaizen is making change for the better. So far you have identified the problem, identified the root cause, developed solution, make the implementation plan, communicated to everyone. So the fourth day, you are going to make the changes. How you are going to do it? Develop a plan, inform the stakeholders, compromise. Whatever the adjustments are required, you do it. Now implement the solutions. Once you are putting solution, then you must monitor two things, not just the result, your results and your actions. How changes are being implemented and how you are getting its impact. So, the implementation should be done under the constant monitoring so that whether you must be sure that whether I am getting the desired result or not. If desired result is not coming, it means there is something wrong in the solution. And then you have to have a relook of your solution and modify the necessary changes or the improvement in the solution. So the implementation requires monitoring of both the things results and process and the procedure. So once you become sure that you are getting a des the desired solution in a proper way as per your plan, it means that your solution was the correct. Just like a doctor, 
once he gives treatment, he says that go and take this medicine for three days. So he is testing the validity of the medicine. If it is responding properly, then he goes, okay, you continue for the next 10 days. So if it is not giving the proper solution, he changes. So the same way, once your solution is responding properly, you are getting improvement in your process performance, then you become sure okay, that I have selected the right method, right solution. Now make a standard. So a standardization means that becomes norm for the operation of all the people. You have to make a standardization is the material standard about the material, about the machine, about the method, about the people, about the measurements, all standard way how you can get the desired results. That is standard made and everybody is trained on the standardization this way. Some more questions have come. <clears throat> what if we have two or more appropriate solution for the same problem? Yeah, they, so it is a good more the solutions you develop. Now, out of the various alternate solutions, you have to select solution which is the most appropriate, most feasible. I'm just giving one example. Suppose I have to fly, I have to go from Calcutta to Bombay. There are various solutions to go from Calcutta to Bombay. I can just take a Padyatra on just one foot or start from Calcutta to Bombay. It may take months. I can take a motorcycle on journey. I can go on the bus. I can fly. So there are n number of solutions. I can go by train. So now depending my limitations, if I have got not got enough money, I cannot afford the flight, so I can go by the train. So if train is also expensive, I can find out some other cheaper method. It may take time. So the, always there has to be number of solutions based on the feasibility, availability, and your present situation, you can select one of the solutions. So always more solutions should be there. And out of that, you can select which is fitting to your budget, fitting to your circumstances. Please provide an example of cause and defect diagram for solving the problem. Yes, very nice question. I'll give one of the very powerful historical story. The Chanakya, I think everybody knows the Chanakya. Chanakya was the advisor of the king. So he used to live in a small hut about two kilometers away from the palace of the king. And every day he was walking through the plain ground and he was not using any shoe. He was just barefooted going, very simple person. So what happened during that path in his journey, there used to be some grass that is called kus in the Sanskrit word, which has got a very sharp leaves. So that he used to hit, pinch his feet every day. What he tried, he started cutting some grasses. But again, after a few days, the new grass was coming, so it was not solving the problem. So what Chanakya did, he dug out the root of the grass and took out the root thrown away. But again, after some time, the new root was evolved because some small traces were left. Then he find this permanent solution, what the chach, what we call it, chach, the buttermilk, right? Once that is put, that burns the root of the kush and that solved the problem. So he was burning forever. That was the root cause. Means unless the root cause was destroyed, it will reappear again. Just like doctors, they say, in antibiotics, in a, in a viral, unless you take all five days the, bio, the antibiotics, again it may relapse. So the five days course that eliminates the vi virus forever. So this is the best example. Unless we eliminate the root of it, we cannot solve the problem. So we have to reach to the root cause of the problem. What came earlier? Kaizen, 
No, cryogen is a much, much old. In fact, in ISO 9001 is nothing but a journey towards cryogen. It is a tool for the cryogen. 9001 came in 1987. So the cryogen is an age-old technique. It is a natural technique, natural phenomena, how we continuously improve. What is the maximum cost we can invest in a Kaizen? <laughs> Very interesting question. Maximum cost is that training cost. Training of your team members, that is the maximum cost, maybe few thousand rupees. Just a faculty fee, that is the cost. I, do, I think audio is still working. Some, somebody complained that disconnect. I think it is going on well. Which type of training conducted in soft floor to motivate work workers doing Kaizen? Best way, as I told, the five days Kaizen event is one of the best training where they can practically learn the methodology of Kaizen. Of course, in addition to the Kaizen learning, the company has to miss their HR people they have to continuously motivate the people. Some incentive scheme, some uh, motivational schemes has to be introduced by the HR people to keep people engaged in the kind. Audio, we are just checking some problem with the audio. I am just telling the team, just please excuse me. Some audio problem is there. Audio problem is there. Audio problem is there. Yeah, we are checking the audio. Trying to rectify somebody else. Should we hire a different team for this event or use the. No, no, no. You need not hire a different team. You can at the most hire the Kaizen consultant coach. The Kaizen has to be done by the people who are performing the day-to-day -day tasks, right? There is no need of hiring a different team. The only people who are doing 24 by 7 the operations, they should learn the Kaizen. There is no need of separate team. Okay, let's move forward. So the fourth day, once you have got the improvement, desired improvement in your process, then you have to standardize. And that standard becomes the training material for all the operators. Everybody must learn that is a proven method which has given the good result and they should follow the same thing to get the... Once <coughs> you have got the desired return, result standardized, then another tool is called Pokayoke in the Japanese, that's mistake proofing. You have to make sure that any mistake should not take back you to the old habits or the old performance. One has to learn the mistake proofing. It is just like a vaccination. It is a vaccination so that the same problem cannot arise. There are different tools we can take in future on the mistake proofing, how to go about it because it needs a total dedicated session on this. Then typical results of Kaizen, what has been achieved by the Kaizen even 40 to 60 percent reduction of lead time. Lead time is that from order to the delivery, how much time you take to deliver the product. Because why it takes more time? Because of many problems, many bottlenecks, they go on reducing, miss blocking the flow of the material. So 40 to 60 percent reduction of lead time, that is the immediate effect. What you are doing in 10 days, you can bring down to three to four, five days. 10 to 15 percent productivity improvement. Immediately, your wastages are reduced, so your output can improve by 15 to 20 percent. 10 to 20 percent reduction in rework. The rework is actually that is a consuming cause, that is causing delay, that is using your resources for doing a non-value added activities. So, by Kaizen, you can reduce your rework. In the first pass itself, you can improve your quality. Improved communication between the functions and departments. You have seen during Kaizen, everything must be communicated. This is a final 
these are the essential steps in kaizen you must standardize the process you must train the people you must inform them in advance what need to be changed so the communication improves and the performance improves clearly define customer needs throughout the value stream so what exactly customer requires that is the ultimate target of the process so it should be very clear to everyone improved customer satisfaction once we improve the quality cost and delivery by the kaizen customer gets more satisfied and <coughs> we can provide better service so now <coughs> four days four days during the first four days you have achieved your target the fifth day now is the preparation of the proper document and report and sharing with the whole organization because the reason is that kaizen has to be spread any kaizen it should be the live case study of the company the team must make a presentation to the entire organization so it should be made known to the people sharing the knowledge and wisdom so that every employee is motivated to participate in the kaizen so the team should document it the strength structured format to make a presentation how they have started journey what data they have collected how they have analyzed it so the learning is shared by the all the people the ceo all the management time has to be taken out maybe even after the work is over maybe an hour event can be there where presentation by the teams and whole organization can witness it how it has been done so all team members should participate allow time during event to prepare invite sponsor here the sponsor is the top man they must be present during the presentation how it has been done invite audience to stay for celebration and once it has been done to motivate the people it must be celebrated it must be if you want and recognition should be there so that all employees must get involved become a enthusiastic they come voluntarily for the kaizen so this way the cultural transformation takes place in the company that's why in the beginning i emphasize the hr must be fully involved and top management must be fully involved because their role is that motivate the people this is live case study what has been done in the company by your own people just by learning so they must create a, a benchmark a example for the whole organization how they can do a transformation so it must be celebrated but after celebration one should not follow so it must be unless follow up is done unless continuous follow up monitoring is done it is not the event is over it is not chapter is closed that is the beginning of it there must be a periodical review of all kaizen activities one kaizen is completed then the same team and others to take the different kaizen there are thousands of problems in the company and this way every person should be involved in some team that culture should be involved and the it should be follow up should be the top most priority of top ones they are regularly doing maybe weekly fortnightly or monthly meeting how much kaizen is being done how they, this is a performing this way gradually kaizen culture will develop in company and then in due course of time that becomes a natural culture of the company there is no need of push and everybody gets trained and automatically improvement becomes a continuous journey of the company <clears throat> so this is a method of kaizen event what you can do in the five days by dedicated team but in many situations if you cannot do it it can be done in even 3 months time here a team is there they can work few days few 20% of some extra time it's not necessary kaizen event is not the only way and many situations kaizen is done through four phases plan do check out activity so here during a team is there they collect a data and plan it may not be in the event form it may be a week journey they can do with a normal work and the same way they can complete the kaizen in 4 to 6 weeks doing the same activities and in a due course of time so both options are there you can take a project activity parallel along with your natural work routine work and another is kaizen event during a 5 days week 5 days event under the guidance of kaizen expert so i recommend first you must learn the kaizen event you must invest for the 5 days consulting and you a team should 
learn the Kayan methodology, then gradually that can spread throughout the organization. Now I am just giving a real case study which was done in one of the one of the auto component manufacturing company in the Faridabad during a lean consulting period. There is a company which is making two wheeler battery box component which is made of sheet metal and there is some wire component is welded in this battery box just to hold the wires. This is the live case study which I guided during a consulting. So the company was to provide 1400 boxes per day but there was a problem after the welding of wire component operators were just throwing but most of the wire component was getting break, breaking. So very high degree of rework means once the wire component weld joint was breaking then again it has to be inspected rework and many times means they were not able to deliver the entire supply in the time. So it was taken as a Kaizen project. So data were collected and it was found that at least 22% wire joints were breaking during the production and it has to be reworked and there was a lot of complaint was coming from the customer. So this was a taken project. I just formed a team. One brilliant engineer was there. He found really very good solution. So <clears throat> along with the operators. Reason was that well joint was brittle and hard. After welding it was thrown by the operators and due to impact in many situations it was breaking. So further investigation was done. It was found that then I just wanted to guide them. Let's go deep. Why it is means getting break. So what was found the wire which was being used was a high carbon wire. Very hard wire was there that was used for the welding. If carbon content is very high in the wire, so the joint becomes automatically very brittle. It can break it. And just with a small impact load, it will come out. That was the main reason observed after the cause and defect analysis. So the what action was taken? Hard steel wire used for the wire component was replaced by low carbon white steel wire. So because means it was studied whether it can be replaced or not, the OEM was consulted because the function of that wire clamp was only just to keep the, uh, the battery cable in place. There was no other function. So even a mild steel wire that could have been done well. So uh, during the welding, those who are acquainted with the welding process, there is a Typical term used carbon equivalent. Total carbon in the welding wire, base metal, and the electrode. That is important. Means equivalent means with all composition. If it is very high, it will create a very brittle weld. So just to reduce the carbon equivalent, you have to take action. You can't change the base metal composition, but you can change the composition of the wire which is being welded and composition of the electrode where less carbon equivalent can be obtained. So the high carbon hard wire was replaced by low carbon soft wire and it was experimented and the new welds were made based on that. Then and some handling practice was improved by educating the operator they should not throw with impact load. So by this way a miraculous improvement was achieved which was a 22% rework means defect it came down below 2% just by replacing the chemical by changing the chemical composition of oil and the electrode we got really fantastic result so this is one of the very nice example of Kaizen which has been done in SMEs just by applying their knowledge and the common sense so friends some tips for the Kaizen is that first thing Throw out, throw all your concrete heads. Most of the companies, if you go, the operators, they register it. Okay, I am doing since last 20 years. Nobody has thought this is the one leaving. First, you have to throw out your old, old habit. This is the one leaving. Think any new change is brought. People will start giving excuse. No, this cannot be done. This is the reason. That is the reason. So instead of that, you have to start thinking this change, how to make it happen. Rather than finding a reason of failure, means think positively. This is change is required. This is a positive for the company. How to make it happen? People start doing it. 
Then third, don't accept excuses. Once plan is made, there should not be any excuse for that material was not there, person was absent. With so many reasons people find out, no excuse. It has to be done on what putting basis without acceptance of excuses. Here the top management has to make clear communication and take a standing that no excuses, it has to be done for the betterment of the company. Then to solve the problem, as I told, why, why analysis, minimum you ask five times to these to the root cause. Then another tip is that correct the mistake the moment happens. Don't accumulate the mistake. Anything goes wrong, immediately stop the production, rectify it, then move it. Don't seek perfection. Any improvement you are doing, don't think that 100% success. Even a 5%, 10% improvement is good because learning lessons gradually you go on increasing the success rate. So, Kaizen with less cost or no cost. Actually, practically if you see, Kaizen is no cost. Because you are going to apply your time, effort and brain. But only, there is no cost, only investment on the learning, what you have to do. There is no cost. I see, Miss, I will give the statement Kaizen at no cost. With a little investment of time, effort and money. So, 10 people idea is better than one. This is a Kaizen is a teamwork. Means instead of just I alone develop solution, here the people are coming as a team and you have to respect every member of the team irrespective of their designation or the role. So this way 10 people come together, they will find out better solutions. So this way Kaizen has no limits. So it can go on continuously improving, improving. So this way, this is the Kaizen spirit, Kaizen mindset. We have to start going Kaizen continuously. So ultimate outcome of Kaizen, what we decided that profitable growth, how it can happen. If we can improve our quality, we can reduce our cost, we can ensure our on-time delivery automatically, your productivity will improve, your sales will improve, your turnover will improve and this way only one can make profitable growth. There is no other meaning, other way <coughs> other than the Kaizen only by making your process and people improve, you can make a profitable growth. So, <clears throat> Kaizen, <clears throat> now using the technology, you can see in this figure, even the turtle has used the roller with a modern bearing, just with a small effort he can increase his speed. So, we have to take the help of today technology. Fortunately, technology is easily available throughout the world. It has become very cheap and people are educated. Every person is now, even the software literate or illiterate, he knows how to use that, how to use the technology, computer literacy has come. So we have to combine the Kaizen with our common, common sense and take the help of technology and definitely we can improve faster, faster and faster and we can become a global leader. It's not necessary that only big companies, they can become global leader. Only small companies using the Kaizen, applying the new te tools, techniques, applying their common sense, learning and motivated, they can beat any big company. So this way, the Kaizen can help every company to become a world class, become a global leader in their field. With this, I thank you for your present hearing and I am sure that you must have gained some insight within the Kaizen and this is just an introduction to Kaizen. There may be a lot of one day full workshop where you can learn it and now I will try to answer some questions which has come. Should we hire a different team? No, already I told means the persons who are doing they, they should learn the Kaizen. Then what about the day-to-day day -day working if the existing staff is evolved in this event? So here you are not going to stop the complete line. Select one problem and out of your line cross function form one, four, five persons team. It doesn't say that you stop your plant. Take pick up from four, five people. They learn it and parallelly they go to do it and this way everybody will learn. So it is not telling that you should stop your production and do only Kaizen. 
Will five ways technique help us to improve our ideas for the Kaizans? Five ways is the foundation. If there is no five ways, you cannot improve. So for making any improvement, just like suppose I want to improve my health. So any amount of vitamin or yoga will not help you unless you keep your body clean, unless you maintain your lifestyle. So the five ways makes your workplace clean, efficient, safe. Then only you can make it sustainable Kaizen. So 5S is the foundation for the Kaizen. What is a value stream? Value stream is a, used in the language of lean manufacturing. Mostly the current way of managing, it is called vertical management. We divided our all operations in marketing, production, punching, drying, different departments. The value stream is a horizontal process. Here, instead of a vertical department, right from this step one to order to design, delivery, procure, uh, design, procurement, production steps, everything is managed horizontally. That is a value stream, right from taking order to the delivery of the material in the hands of customer. It is horizontal management of the entire operation of that is called value stream. How to make a balance between the day to day working and the working to be done in the Kaizen event. The Kaizen event day to day working will continue that you are doing your operations with that. Out of your say for example in your operations 50 persons are there, 20 persons are there. So just pick out 3-4 persons from the day to day operations and they select a project and parallelly they implement without stopping the production. So this way you make improvement and in rotation everybody gets involved and learns it. So it is not hampering the day-to-day -day operation. This way one can learn the Kaizen and make everyone learn it. So can we make so any example of Kaizen done by any company? I already given one example of Kaizen. During long Training sessions, lot of example, even some practical exercise can be done. But already I have given a very practical example for the experiment. How Kaizen was evaluated? Kaizen is evaluated by improving the productivity of the company, improving the quality percentage rate, reduction of defect rate, improving the on-time delivery percentage. This way Kaizen is evaluated. So these are the some of the questions. What are the factors? that considered for new Kaizen. As I told, if your quality defect rate is going very high, it means you need a Kaizen in your quality management practices. If your on-time delivery is very poor, you are lot of delays are taking place, it new, you need a Kaizen. If your equipments are frequently breaking down, you are not able to produce, you need a Kaizen. If your cost is very high compared to your competitor, it means there is something wrong in your process. You need a Kaizen to reduce the cost. So there are so many examples are there for the Kaizen. Okay, friends, thank you very much. I hope that this must have enlightened you the importance of Kaizen. Now you got the idea, but the one and a half hours is just to introduce the concept. It, Toyota has taken 30 years on the records to improve it. So it is a journey it is not a destination kaizen is a continuous journey once you learn it it is going to help you continuously improve as long as your company exists kaizen is has to be there just like breathing so this is a life for any company's growth okay friends thank you very much for this your time and patience